Welcome to Type-C Tech Reviews. Today we're gonna to be doing a review of the LG 27GN650-B. If at any point during the video you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links, but let's jump into it. All right, now right off the bat, this is a 27 inch 1920 by 1080p resolution IPS monitor. This puts the PPI or pixels per inch at about 81 which means the image is gonna be clear, but not crispy like a 1440p or 2K resolution monitor. That being said, there is a huge pro to that, which is the refresh rate. And the response time hits 144 hertz. This means even for less powerful rigs, pushing 1080p at high refresh rates, like 120, 144 frames will be pretty easy. So even though you're getting lower resolution, you are getting that really fluid high refresh rate. Not only PCs, but if you have a console like an Xbox Series S, a PS5, or the Xbox Series X, this would be really great for that. Or if you had something where you wanted to switch between them, that's also good for that. Now, continuing on with that, variable refresh rate. This has free sync, but the really, really big thing for the PC gamers is it has G-Sync compatibility that is certified by NVIDIA, which is absolutely huge to see at this very low price point. All right, now brightness. It is advertised at 350 nits. That was pretty bang on because during testing, I was getting between 340 and 350 nits. However, that's not it. Continuing on with that, in HDR, this thing goes up to a whopping 420 nits of brightness, which is very bright for a monitor that is advertised at 350 nits. That's huge. So if you wanna do some HDR gaming, watching movies, stuff like that, it's gonna be pretty good for that. Obviously not the best out there. It's not up to a thousand nits, something like that, but it is quite good which is awesome. Now as well, the matte finish on the screen is quite good at keeping away reflections. So even if you're in a bright room, have a lot of lights in that room at this brightness with that matte display, uh, you should be pretty good with reflections. That being said, if you're right in front of a window and the windows to your back or you're at direct sunlight most of the time, uh, you will have to move the monitor or close the blinds. All right, colors are good, covering 99% of the sRGB color gamut and outputting eight bits of color. Now, obviously, we're not seeing 10 bits of color here. This is a more budget monitor. However, LG pre-calibrates their monitors from the factory, so the color accuracy out of the box is gonna be substantially better than other brands. It's not gonna be perfect, but it is gonna be a lot better. All right, but the real world vibrancy, as you can see in the B-roll shots, this is a nice and vibrant panel. However, it's not quite as vibrant as some more expensive panels, but again, you do expect this. Now, I noticed this right off the bat because I'm constantly using $1,000 plus monitors uh, and some of the nicest monitors on a daily basis. However, if you're used to something that's not as nice or a few years old, even a year old uh, or two years old, this is gonna be quite good. All right, contrast ratio is typical for IPS panels at 1000 to one. So even though you don't get those super deep blacks, you are getting better colors uh, and you are getting the big thing is the viewing angles because as an IPS panel, you get basically perfect viewing angles. So there's no washing out, there's no color shift. Even if you move to the left or right, up and down, that's absolutely huge. That's one of the reasons I love IPS panels, not only for gaming, but also for everyday work. This is a monitor that you can use every single day for all of your tasks, not only gaming, but it games incredibly well. Now, after testing, we found no backlight bleed or IPS glow. That being said, I have heard of some people having pretty bad IPS glow on this specific monitor. So keep in mind that if you get this and it has that, send it back, get a replacement. Even though from my personal experience, LG has the best quality control out of all the gaming monitor companies out there, there are some lemons, so definitely make sure, don't just like think, oh, that's the monitor, that's a defect. It happens with every monitor. However, the one that I have doesn't have that at all. All right, now response time and ghosting. This is where it gets really good for the budget. The price point, it's really good. Okay, so the response time hits a max response time of one millisecond, gray to gray, which is good in and in itself. But how does that translate to actual ghosting? Well, there is four different levels. There is off, low, fast, and then faster. I don't know if it's low, it might be a different name for that. But basically, in the fastest response time setting, when it actually hits that one millisecond gray to gray, it is absolutely awful. There is an insane amount of pixel overshooting and inverse ghosting. However, in the fast setting, which is the second fastest setting, there is basically no ghosting. Even in a controlled test, it's very hard to see. And in real world usage while gaming or just working, you basically cannot see 
any ghosting. You absolutely cannot see any ghosting. Really great for fast paced games. Now beyond that, just like the little brother, the 24 inch version, the 24 GN650, this one has exceptionally low input lag. So again, if you just like low input lag on your monitors, which everyone does, um, or if you really want to do fast paced games at a budget, this thing is really fast and you're just getting a lot of value there. All right, the menu system and controls, you guys have heard it from me a million times. LG has the best menu system in the industry. The controls are super easy to learn. It's basically a single joystick under the chin in the front of the monitor. It's easy to get to even if you have some panels side by side, you have a dual monitor or triple monitor setup going, you can still get to those easily. It's fast to get to everything. The menu system is pretty and there is absolutely no learning curve and it's fast. That's what's huge. All of it is super easy to do. Pick it up right out of the box and you're good to go. Basic compatibility is great being compatible with 100 millimeter by 100 millimeter base mounts. And not only that, but they include the screws for you in the back of the monitor when you get it. That's actually really good. And that's helped me out a couple of times when I'm mounting LG monitors. All right, now ports are pretty good, not amazing. This is kind of where they cheap out, but not really a problem for me and my priorities with this monitor. It has two HDMI 2.0s, a display port 1.4, and then a three and a half millimeter audio out. That's pretty much everything you need. You don't need any like USBs or anything like that. It would be nice but you don't really need it. They're focusing on the panel here and I love that. Now stand and build quality is great. This is where you get the 50 side of it. So the 600, the 650. So this one has the premium LG monitor stand with height adjustability, tilt adjustability, and full rotation going completely vertical if you wanted to. This is incredibly nice to have. And actually on the monitor back there, my daily monitor uses the exact same stand. This is also one of the best looking monitor stands in my opinion, uh, probably matching with something from like Alienware. Those are very good looking stands as well, but this one's hard to beat. It's very pretty. But overall, should you buy this monitor? Well, if you want a super fast and responsive monitor that has good colors, great viewing angles, and can easily hit high frames on less powerful rigs or consoles, yes, I absolutely recommend this. Again, if you want to check it out, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, Canada, and international links. However, if you do want better colors, brightness, and a higher resolution, I do recommend the LG 27 GP850. I'll link below my review to that as that monitor is absolutely amazing. It is at a higher price point at around $500 where this thing typically retails for 250. It actually goes for 300, but I see it most of the time at about 250. So it's double the price for the GP, uh, but it is quite a good monitor. So if you do have the extra money to spend and you do want a nicer monitor, go check out my review below. But this was Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.